All right, hello and welcome everyone to our Produce Spotlight class for today. Happy fall. It's definitely with the weather outside being cooler. Um, this is the perfect class for today with butternut squash, which we'll be focusing on today. My name is Charlotte Scheid. I'm one of the Giant Company Dietitians, and that is what we're going to focus um, on today for our produce. So I saw a lot of people in the chat saying that they love butternut squash and even squash in general, like spaghetti squash, um, but butternut squash. Sometimes we think of butternut squash as just roasting it, but there's actually a lot that you can do with it. Um, it's one of my favorite fall, fall produce items. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today is butternut squash. So our agenda, we're of course going to start out with our true or false game. So butternut squash, true or false, go over some facts, including nutrition facts, how to pick one or how to pick a butternut squash, storage and cleaning, how to use it, some products at Giant Martin's, some savory magazine recipes. Um, on the cooking demo, we're gonna be making a arugula salad with roasted butternut squash. Um, before class, I already, act I already roasted my butternut squash, um, so I'm ready to go with that. And then we're going to be doing a product highlight, and I don't know if anybody joined the Feature Friday with Jenna, but we're also gonna be talking a little bit about the Big Easy Pop, which is a uh, prebiotic and probiotic soda. Very delicious, can go with any meal, or just if you need a little bit of hydration, it's perfect for that too. Okay, so let's do our true or false, which I always like to do in our produce classes. So true or false, the skin and seeds are edible. True or false, you can put your answer in the chat. So it looks like we have a lot of true, so give everybody a couple seconds. So it looks like the majority say true. Let's see what the answer is. So the answer is true. So the skin and seeds, if you roast them, um, are kind of similar to pumpkin seeds when you roast them and eat them as well. I will say some of the butternut squash, um, the smaller butternut squash has more of like a thinner skin, probably a little bit more uh, easier to eat. So as it gets larger, the skin can become thicker and then uh, may not want to eat it, so eat it as much. But there's many different recipes where it includes the skin, but the skin and seeds are edible. Okay, butternut squash is a good source of vitamin A. So we know that vitamin A is really good for our eye health. So true or false? And again, you can put your answer in the chat. All right, so our answer is, so true. So butternut squash is an excellent source of vitamin A, which again, very important for our, for our eye health. And the last true or false, so butternut squash is a winter squash that is a close relative to the pumpkin. True or false? So it looks like a lot of you say true, so let's see what the answer is. So this is true, so it is a close relative uh, to the pumpkin. So thanks everybody for doing our true or false game for butternut squash. So to start out, I wanted to go over just some quick facts. So butternut squash has kind of a mild, sweet, and nutty flavor. It peaks, or it can be found year-round in store, but it is peak or peaks in the fall and winter months. So one cup of butternut squash raw has about 63 calories, four essential nutrients of spotlight. It's a good source of fiber, so three grams, three grams of fiber for one cup raw. So we know that fiber is really important for supporting heart and digestive health and gut health and helps to regulate blood sugar as well. Great source of vitamin C. So as we're coming into the winter months and we're thinking about our immune system and germs and sickness, this would be a great thing to incorporate into our diet. That's a really good source of vitamin C. Again, with vitamin A, also a good source as well as potassium. So we know that potassium plays a key role in nerve function and muscle contraction. So those are just some of the, some of the nutrients in butternut squash, but a lot of different benefits um, for incorporating it into our diet. So when we are in store, or just if you're picking a butternut squash, we want to choose one with uniform beige color. Um, skin should be hard and smooth. Stem should be intact and dry. And when we, when, when we are also looking at it, we want to avoid anyone or any butternut squash with cuts or cracks. If it has any soft spots or wrinkling, this may be a sign that it's overripe or beginning to spoil. If it has green spots or streaks on it, this may mean that it's not fully ripe. 
and any type of bruises, of course, with any type of produce item, we do not want to purchase. So if you see any of those things, definitely choose a different butternut squash. So just something to think about when we are in store and choosing a butternut squash, we want one that is, um, you know, fresh and ready to go. And then when we're thinking about storage and cleaning, so kind of like with potatoes or any other squash, so it's best kept in a cool, dry, and dark storage space. At room temperature, they suggest around 50 degrees. Of course, that can, you know, sometimes that's not always, um, our houses are not always 50 degrees, but if it's kept in like a cool, dark, and um, dry and dark storage space, that will work. But it can last up to a month if stored properly. We only want to wash our butternut squash before cooking and not before storing. So when you do or are ready to use it, you want to wash it with cool running water before cutting it. And you can peel it depending on the recipe, but some recipes you don't have to peel it. Uh, but again, that peel is edible. And then once cu cut, we want to store the squash in an airtight container or bag and really use it within about four to five days or so um, that it will stay fresh. Since it is the peak time for butternut squash, you can, of course, you can freeze it for later months. So for freezing it, we want to peel, cube, and blanch. So blanching meaning boil for three minutes and then putting it in an ice bath. Then after that's done, you can place it in a freezer bag or container. But if you do do this, it can last for up to 12 months um, relatively fresh. So that's something to think about for storage and cleaning. But especially since it's the peak time for butternut squash, this may be a good time to uh, freeze it for you know, later recipes and use. So how to use butternut squash. So a lot of times when I hear kind of about butternut squash, usually people really don't know what to do with it or even just squash in general. But there's a lot of different ways to use butternut squash. Um, so let's review some of those things. So again, with roasting, and there's a lot of different types of herbs and spices that you can incorporate when you are roasting it. So normally just roasting it in the oven, um, you know, for about 20, 25 minutes. You can incorporate it into a soup. So a lot of soup or a lot of soups or stews or chili recipes, you can incorporate butternut squash. You can make it into a pasta sauce. Or I'll be reviewing a recipe for mac and cheese. That's I know that my daughter loves that. You can incorporate butternut squash. I'll boil it down, kind of puree it, and mix it with cheese or blend it with cheese. And that makes for a great macaroni and cheese sauce. So any type of pasta sauce is a good one. Or risotto. You can stuff a butternut squash, kind of similar to a stuffed pepper or even stuffed tomatoes. You can, of course, put it on a salad, which we're going to be making that arugula salad with roasted butternut squash. You can actually incorporate it into, there's many different recipes for bread and muffins. And even you can make it into fries. So I think there's a savory recipe too for fries that you can coat it with like a Parmesan cheese and fry it um, and then um, many different types of sauces too. So as you can see, many different types of ways to use butternut squash. So we always have to think kind of outside the box to use uh, butternut squash. So these are some butternut squash pairings. So when we're thinking about different recipes or, you know, kind of stuck in a rut, these are some what are some things that pair well with butternut squash. I saw some... Uh, somebody in the chat was talking about apples and butternut squash. So apples and butternut squash make a great pairing, even cranberries or pears. So pears are in season right now. And even pomegranate seeds, if you're into pomegranate seeds. And actually those really make, if you uh, use butternut squash, pomegranate seeds, it just makes for a really colorful plate or meal. Herbs and spices. So these, when I think about nutmeg and cinnamon, especially that makes me think of fall or the holiday season, but even herbs and spices, like sage and rosemary and thyme are good ones if we're thinking about nuts. Um, actually, yeah, I have pe pecans on here. So we'll be using those um, in today's recipe, but walnuts and pecans and even cheese. Goat cheese is a good one. So I'll be using a garlic and herb goat cheese on the salad, um, but there's many, many different types of goat cheese. I don't know if anybody likes goat cheese, but if you haven't tried it, definitely uh, try it on the salad. It's really delicious. Also feta cheese, blue cheese, and Parmesan. We've talked about those butternut squash fries and coating it with a Parmesan cheese is always delicious. So next time you're thinking about, you know, different types of pairings, you know, think about those, but especially apples. Um, of course, since it's fall, apples are definitely in season right now. So you can do a lot of different things with that, but also makes for a great pairing for butternut squash. Okay, so these are our butternut squash products at Gina Martins, um, especially since we are in this class series for our produce spotlight class focusing on uh, meal prep and prepping produce. I wanted to mention, so this is what I use for roasting my butternut squash for today, especially if you don't have a lot of time. So this top picture, so this is our cubed butternut squash that's already, you know, ready to go for many different types of recipes. 
And I think also, I haven't seen this in store recently, but also they are going to be having um, the butternut squash kind of zoodles or noodles. I don't know if anybody has seen those in store. Sometimes you can see the, the zucchini ones, but they should have the butternut squash ones. So you can really add that into a lot of different recipes and dishes. Um, so something to think about. Again, if you don't have a lot of time, it's always nice to do um, an already prepped produce item, like our butternut squash cubes. Then we have just the regular butternut squash that you can do. You can cut it and cube it. We also have a frozen version. So um, this Woodstock variety, the butternut squash, the only thing that is in it is just the butternut squash. So nothing added to it. And then I also, you can't really tell from this packaging right here, but this is a butternut squash with some cinnamon on it. So if you're using it for, you know, something maybe like sweeter or something like that, but this is butternut squash with cinnamon on it. So we talked about cinnamon being a good pairing for butternut squash, um, which is, yeah, it always tastes delicious and makes me think of fall and holiday season. So next time you're in storage, definitely check out those type of products, but definitely keep an eye out for the butternut squash uh, noodles. So these are some butternut squash recipes. So if anybody is new on here, this is our savory magazine. You can find this in store, usually in the front. They usually go pretty fast because people like the paper version, but you can view these recipes online. Um, so again, this is our savory magazine. Recipes that I pulled out for our butternut squash, uh, butternut squash recipes. So first I mentioned about butternut squash mac and cheese. So this is a really great way, especially for kids to just kind of put in a produce item into mac and cheese. So this is just some medium pasta shells on this cubed butternut squash, loaf that milk, butter, and then American cheese. So you can um, blend that, puree that, and put that on the pasta. Um, so this is a good source of protein. Um, so it helps you to feel for the longer and it does get one guiding star. Another recipe, I know that some of you in the chat were talking about soups and stews and chowder. This is a delicious chowder that gets three guiding stars. So some yellow onion, celery, garlic, um, the butternut squash, which we have here. So two packages of that, coriander, cumin, cinnamon, a lot of different great spices and uh, flavor going on in this chowder and then some vegetable broth as well. So definitely, especially with the colder weather coming, I'm super excited about soups, uh, stews, chowders. So this is one for butternut squash. And again, three guiding stars. So definitely a lot of nutritional benefit to this one. Then I always like a good sheet pan meal, which I probably said in other classes, but this is a sheet pan chicken with squash and Brussels sprouts. Also Brussels sprouts are kind of coming into season, which I really love. But um, sheep pan meals especially are really good because there's minimal cleanup. Um, you don't, don't have to clean up a lot of dishes and that type of thing. So this is butternut squash, Brussels sprouts, chicken, some balsamic vinegar, thyme, and then garlic powder. So good flavor going on there. Really good source of protein, 31 grams, and then seven grams of fiber. And it does get two, two guiding stars. So sheep pan meal idea for um, utilizing that butternut, butternut squash. Okay, so let me just check this out really quick. Okay, so our cooking demo for today, um, like I said before, we're gonna be making a arugula salad with roasted butternut squash. And I already, well, I'll actually I'll talk about that, about roasting the butternut squash, but I did do it before, before class. Okay, so this is our recipe, gets one guiding star. So again, I'm using, and you can just buy a roasted butternut squash and cut it up, or not roasted butternut squash, a butternut squash, cut it up and then roast it. Um, but I, I did the cubed butternut squash just because it saved a little bit of time. So you roast that with some olive oil for about 20 to 25 minutes. So also the salad has some red onion. So I'm gonna be cutting up and slicing my red onion. Also, probably also mentioned in some classes, I love a good vinegar on a salad. So we're gonna be using white wine vinegar, Dijon mustard, mixing that together. I have my arugula. So this is our Nature's Promise Baby Arugula, which I love that it's in this container because it's already washed and you can open it and reseal it and it stays in the refrigerator fresh for a long time. Also gonna be incorporating some pecans, which good pairing for butternut squash, and then that goat cheese with herbs um, that I have right here. And again, if you haven't tried goat cheese on a salad, I would highly recommend it. It's very, very delicious. You don't even have to add that much to get a lot of flavor with it. Um, with this recipe, so eight grams of protein and three grams of fiber, and again, one guiding star. And before we get started with the recipe, 
I wanted to just mention too about our product spotlight, which I talked about in the beginning. So this is Big Easy Pop. Um, so I have two containers right here. So again, it goes along, you can drink it of course with any meal or snack or just to stay hydrated, but it's a um, super delicious prebiotic and probiotic soda drink. Only has two grams of added sugar. So it's made with real fruit juice. Um, so it has 1 billion live probiotic cultures. The nice thing that it has prebiotics and probiotics in it is they really work together to really, um, you know, be beneficial for gut health because those prebiotics help to feed that healthy bacteria, which are the probiotics in our gut. So this is a great way or a great thing to incorporate to, to our diets to do that. And they come in a variety of flavors, so mixed berry and orange. So I have the orange right here, strawberry lemonade, and then pineapple as well. So again, uh, what I mentioned before with probiotics, they're live beneficial bacteria that support a healthy gut. And then prebiotics are those non-digestible fibers that feed the gut, feed the good bacteria, those probiotics in the gut. So really when they are you know, together, very beneficial for gut health. Yeah, so both work together to support overall digestive health, but you don't necessarily just have to drink it um, straight out of the can. Well, you, you can drink them straight as a soda or even a cocktail alternative. You can mix it with other juices or ingredients for mocktails, cocktails, um, maybe with a splash of vanilla coffee creamer, or then you can also create fun smoothies and smoothie bowls as well. So you don't necessarily have to just drink it out of the can, but there's a lot of different ways to you or to, to use this. Um, so next time you're in store, definitely check out the Big Easy Pop. Again, especially if you're kind of sick of water or want something different, you can always put a splash of it in, splash of it in water um, to kind of you know, mix it up a little bit. So anyways, next time you're in store, definitely check out that Big Easy Pop. It's usually in the nature's promised kind of natural food section. All right. With that, we're going to get ready on, or get started on our on our recipe. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do, actually, yeah, I'm going to cut. Let's cut up my red onion first. So I already peeled it. Um, so I'm just going to. So this recipe you want to use. Um, let me just yes or a fourth of a small red onion. I'm just gonna cut this down the center, just place that over there and cut this again. So you don't need a whole lot, but we are going to, or I am going to slice it um, kind of into longer pieces. You could probably dice it too if you wanted to do that as well. So again, just kind of um, cutting it for longer slices. And then once I'm done here, I'm going to just set that, set that to the side. There we go. Okay. Yep. So that gives us a good amount of our red onion. Let me go ahead and set this to the side. So I'm going to bring over my larger bowl here. And we are going to put in our kind of our dressing ingredients. So I'm going to add three tablespoons. This is just our extra virgin olive oil, so a lot of healthy fats. So we're going to do three tablespoons. All right, so three tablespoons. We're also going to add to my cap, two tablespoons of our white wine vinegar. So put your answer in the chat. Does anybody currently use a white wine vinegar on their salads? I think it always gives really good, really good addition. So again, we're going to do two tablespoons. So one, two. We're also going to add in two teaspoons of our Dijon mustard. So I'm just using our brand Dijon mustard right here. So two teaspoons. And I'm just gonna get a fork and kind of mix, mix this up. You can also season it with a little bit of salt and pepper if you would like. Let me go before it just mix this up. Then what I'm going to add in is my arugula. Again, so this recipe calls for five ounces. This is a five ounce 
a packet of rope loss, you can use the whole thing. I love arugula because it has a really nice kind of peppery, uh, like a peppery taste to it, which makes for a good addition to a salad. So I'm going to put in my arugula and actually where's my tongs. I'm just going to kind of mix this up a little bit and I'm going to add in my red onion, pecans and the butternut squash. So again, just rotating this to make sure that everything is covered. I love the smell of arugula. Does anybody currently use arugula in their salads? It just has such a nice, um, yeah, just like a nice taste. All right, so this looks like a, the vinegar, not the vinegar, the dressing is on our arugula. I'm gonna add in our red onion. Not bad, or mix this up. Also going to add in a fourth uh, cup of pecans. So this is about half of a cup, so um, half of this package. Actually, I might just add in a little bit more because I really like pecans. So let's mix this up. All right, and then I'm going to add in my butternut squash. So you can see here, I already roasted this. Um, so I had one of so one of these one of these packages. So I just put on here, put a little bit of salt and pepper on, and roasted for about twenty to twenty five minutes, um, and rotating it halfway. So it's nice and soft, and I did already let it cool down because you don't want it totally hot going onto the salad. Okay. So let's put those in here. And with the green and then the orange and the purple, this is a very colorful, nice salad. So if you're trying to impress anybody, this would be a good salad, but definitely perfect for fall. I'm just putting our butter and spoon up into the salad. Go ahead and set this over here. And rotate it into the salad. So you can see here a lot of great, a lot of great color going on. So I'm just going to plate, plate this. Then we're gonna add our goat cheese. Make sure I get some pecans in there. And the squash, right. So you can see here, this is our nice salad. So I'm just going to take some of our goat cheese. This is the garlic and herb goat cheese that I talked about. I kind of push some of it out. It is a little sticky, but that's okay. I'm just gonna kind of cut this up a little bit. And kind of put some goat cheese on here. All right, so this is our arugula salad with roasted butternut squash. So a super colorful dish and a salad, but perfect for fall, especially if you're trying to incorporate, um, incorporate butternut squash. The other thing I just wanted to show uh, really quickly, just, just I mean, this is kind of self-explanatory, but I just wanted to show you um, what I did with this cute butternut squash before, before I put it into the oven. All I did, so, and I think parchment paper is a really good thing if you want to roast the butternut squash on just because it doesn't, you know, doesn't stick or anything to the, to the pan. Sometimes if you use aluminum foil, it just, it doesn't like have the same roasting um, effect. So all I did is I, of course, opened up my butternut squash on this tray. Um, you can season it with salt and pepper. I did not do that. And I usually do about like a tablespoon of olive oil. I just drizzle it on, drizzle it on like that. And I mix it up. You don't have to use your hands, but it makes it easier sometimes. You just wanna make sure everything is spread out so nothing is on top of each other. So everything is um, cooking evenly. So just like that. And so you wanna roast this at 425 for about 20 to 25 minutes. So just like that. So I did do that before class. And again, I let it cool down before putting it on the salad. Let me go wash or uh, wipe my hands one second. 
Okay. So definitely this is a great way to use butternut squash um, into a salad, but again, a lot of different ways to use, use the butternut squash. All right. And again, if I, of course, did not see your question, I'll be sending a follow-up email. You can always email me back with your question.